So welcome guys, this is Ritwik Rawat and I'm the host of the Out of Office podcast which is powered by SyncUp. We have today with us Ankit and he's from Lalitpur, Nepal and he's the founder of 360 Funnels. They are service providers of email, SMS, conversion rate optimization and even UGC content. Uh, Ankit is just 21 years old and a fun fact about him is that he's also a rock star. He's into singing and music and that is I think how, I think that is something which he should pursue in the, you know, in the future as well. So we'll probably make him sing also down the line. So welcome, Ankit. Thank, uh, thank you so much for taking out the time, and glad to have you, man. Thank you, thank you for you know having me. Um, oh. Really stoked to you know do this podcast. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, Ankit, uh, you know, I gave people a short introduction about you. Um, mm-hmm. I would love for you to you know tell us about uh, what is it that you do exactly, and how did you get started in this space. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I started this, um, you know, agency thing when I was 19 and it was, um, you know, inspired from like one of my now friends, Roman, he had like posted a TikTok saying mm-hmm. that, you know, I make $12,000 a month as an 18 year old, you know, I was like, holy shit, you know, mm-hmm. online money and, mm-hmm. uh, kind of got me interested. And I was like, yeah, sure. Give it, let's give it a shot. Um, initially, like I, I got my first job when I was 11 years old and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like over the course of like, let's say 10 years, I did like a bunch of stuff, uh, made like, you know, some decent amount of money. And I think the breakthrough of going from like, uh, like a decent level to like a really good growth happened with the agency. So I just talked to it and yeah, I think it's going great now. That's fantastic, man. Like 11 years old. Um, I remember I was just doing, you know, I was just uh, messing around here and there, playing tennis, probably studying, something like that, playing video games. It's so good to see, you know, motivated people like you, you know, who have started young. And I personally feel like a lot of people on the internet as well, right? The people who people think are like uh, overnight successes, like Iman Gaji or people like these, they have actually started and taken their, you know, uh, their first steps pretty early on. And you already have like 10 years in the game, I would say, right? Like if you started yeah. at 11, you're 21 years old now and you started pretty early, which is fantastic. So I want to know, man, like uh, you mentioned that, you know, your friend was the person uh, who sort of, you know, you looked up to, you got inspired by him and you started and got into the space. But what was it about, you know, uh, this whole e-commerce industry mm-hmm. or this whole SMS email thing? Why did you get started like uh, with paid ads or something? So what was so special about this email and SMS marketing thing? Um. One of the reasons was because it was something new mm-hmm. and uh, back in, I think, 2021, mm-hmm. um, even SMS marketing wasn't that well known, right? And everyone was doing paid ads. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, sure. Like, I mean, it, it still is saturated to a point, but it's not as saturated as paid ads, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, sure. Let's give it a shot. And uh, I always like was good with, uh, you know, writing stuff like copy and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And But I was never like good with all those mathematical and technical stuff mm-hmm. i would say that recorded media buying so i was like um yeah i think this suits me mm-hmm. and i think the the part that kept me going mm-hmm. was the the continuous growth that you know you see when you're like doing business i mean it's not like within like um the next day or like within a week but over the course of let's say three four months the level that you grow mm-hmm. is just what mm-hmm. keeps you uh, motivated to like, okay, how far can I go? And I think that is one of the reasons that, mm-hmm. um, you know, made me stick to this niche in general. Yeah. So like you work primarily with e-com brands, right? Any yeah. niche within that, that you work with, like, okay, I'll only work with skincare or I'll only work with like mm-hmm. a fashion or is it like you're just working and serving all e-com brands right now? Okay. So our main specialty, it comes with fashion and supplements. Okay. That is where our most of our case studies are. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I think when you specialize in, you know, like a certain niche, because <laughs> the thing is, the marketing tactics for fashion might not work in the cosmetic industry, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say uh, supplements, it might not w- work with the gifting niche. So mm-hmm. we kind of have built like a USP with mm-hmm. our service as well within these two mm-hmm. niches. And I think that is where uh, the most of our specialty is. Got it. Got it. So yeah, fashion and supplements, I think it's also, these two are also, you know, probably one of the biggest spaces within e-commerce, right? Um, A lot of brands into the space. So how do you make sure to sort of, um, you know, get your clients results? And what would you say, why is it that, you know, 
email, SMS, conversion and optimization, retention marketing? Why do you think it is working so much into these spaces? Um, I think the number one reason is the rising cost of pay ads. Mm-hmm. Right? I think everyone who runs ads or is in the niche knows that every single year the cost of running is like getting expensive. Mm-hmm. And another thing is that, you know, I think brands have started to realize how important Mm-hmm. that the profit is and not just the revenue right mm-hmm. okay cool like i've worked with brands doing 100k a month and that you know the shopify dashboard 100k a month but they're barely profitable right mm-hmm. and that is not the goal maybe the goal is to let's say get to 30k with let's say 50 percent margins is better mm-hmm. than 100k with no margins at all right and mm-hmm. that is where cro and the retention marketing comes into place so it's about making the ads profitable and retaining customers because there's this data um, i think which is says Five percent increase in retention can increase the profit margin by up to twenty five percent. So, uh, you know, kind of using that um, leverage to boost the profits yeah. is something that makes the CRO and retention space like more important. Yeah, I think uh, what you say holds a lot of value, especially because you know this. I think especially in the past uh, one and a half two years, we have seen this shift between uh, you know there's this whole sort of funding winter going on. And it is also because of brands not being able to, you know, produce any profit. It's only revenue focus and they, you know, they turn, um, you know, they, turn, they they get turned into losses, huge amount of losses because they're not able to retain the people. They only focus on getting the top of the funnel and not actually, you know, selling again to the people who have already bought from them. So I think I can see the power of, um, you know, retention marketing in general. I think you also work with a particular band of, uh, brands like you know like you don't work with brands below i think one million dollars in revenue is is that it yeah so um primarily it's like um a hundred k a month okay or if they've been running for like a year maybe like a million dollars a year so that's the benchmark mm-hmm. that we do. got it so you would say that you can get the best kind of results to these people would you say like people who are in the band of you know ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars, can they also benefit out of retention marketing, or do you think you know they should invest in something like that once they have crossed you know hundred k to one hundred k per month? Um, I mean, I think everyone can like benefit from retention marketing, and the reason that we do, uh, you know, only work with like bigger brands is because mm-hmm. our marketing structure or our service structure relies on like database marketing, right? Okay. So we, um, instead of just like sending out like a few campaigns and just build like four or five flows, what we do is we segment, you know, the list and mm-hmm. the flows into like conditions and behavioral splits. Mm-hmm. Um, and that needs data, right? Mm-hmm. That needs a ton of data to work out to find out what's happening. And it just it's just not possible within the uh, with a store that's doing 10k a month. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it doesn't mean that 10k a month does you know doesn't need email or SMS, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, their primary focus should be most probably on like paid ads and acquisition. Mm. But at the same time, they can, you know, uh, build out certain like basic flows and mm. have like basic principles of CR on the site to mm. increase profitability. Got it. So, um, you know, what would you say like if somebody, some brand owners watching this right now, right? Mm-hmm. Between $10,000 to $100,000, um, what tools and what kind of things, tips can you give them to sort of leverage retention marketing? Okay, so first things first, email and SMS marketing is, you know, doesn't define retention marketing as a whole. It's just a part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where most agencies um, are wrong, where they position themselves as a retention marketing agencies, but all they do is like basic email and SMS stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're like ten to $100,000 in revenue, Mm -hmm. what I'd recommend is use Klaviyo Mm -hmm. for um, um, emails, right? And the reason though I recommend Clavio is because we've been like we've worked with over fifty five stores at this point, and mm-hmm. most of them like uh, was uh, from Clavio, and mm-hmm. we're and Clavio has like really easy structure to build out automations and the splits and everything, so it's definitely recommended. Mm-hmm. With SMS, um, if you're in the U.S. or like the big five country, I think the SMS sending rates are cheaper, mm-hmm. so maybe you could choose like um, Postscript, Attentive. Um, mm-hmm. And like, there's this one new tool called one text where mm. it allows people to, you know, um, mm. buy from the text itself. But if you're in like Europe or any other country that has like higher SMS sending rates, maybe you could try at the lo- their local, um, mm. you know, SMS service provider or even WhatsApp marketing might work good. Got it. So, you know, like, uh, since I've also been into the e-com space, right. 
Um, I understand a little bit about retention marketing, email, SMS. But what would you say is like the one lever if you have to give people like one thing that, okay, you know, you pull this one lever and this will definitely help you with your sales, especially if you are between that ten to $100,000 mark. What would that one lever be? Like what can it, it can be like an abandoned card flow. Mm -hmm. It can be a cross sell upsell. So what would you recommend that one lever be for these people? Yeah. I mean, it's like hard to just, you know, tell mm -hmm. it one single lever. Yeah. But, um, if, if I think the main thing is positioning or the offer itself, because mm -hmm. the thing is like, you know, if you're selling a product, chances are there are like 20 other competitors selling the same products or like the similar product itself. Mm -hmm. Right. So where would you position yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, in the market mm -hmm. and that will allow you to build better offers for your particular target customers right because mm -hmm. let's say um <clears throat> gucci doesn't sell to the same people as let's say h&m mm -hmm. right they have positioning different right yeah. nike doesn't sell to the same people you know let's say who who are buying uh, i don't know um rofers or loafers right so yeah. it's like a different market and based on your positioning you can create offers you can create um, your marketing strategies and mm -hmm. uh, that's how you you know differentiate yourself in the competition so i think that is a part where you know early brands need to be focusing on got it got it makes sense i think that'll be really helpful for people right now for the agency owners who are watching right they would be really curious because you have been doing quite well for the agency like before we get into how do you acquire clients can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the number of clients you're working with, the sort of roadmap you're on in terms of a revenue per month for the agency? Okay. So what we do is like, it's, it's kind of a weird model where, because, you know, most agencies are like, okay, I want to get as much as client as possible. Yeah. But our um, structure is kind of different. Okay. We usually work with less number of clients, mm -hmm. but we work with quality clients, right? So mm -hmm. um, right now we're working with five clients, right? Okay. And all of them are like really high paying. So, mm -hmm. you know, we provide service like email, SMS, as well as consulting and CRO and creatives mm -hmm. to some of our clients as well. So um, right now it's that. And uh, in terms of revenue of agency, we're at six figure a year round rate. So that, that's I think, pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So what would you say is your, um, you know, way of acquiring clients? And especially if you're doing something different, you know, for the people um, who are just starting out and for people who are probably at a level at, you know, same as you. So what would you say are the some of the best practices for acquiring new clients? Um, the, I, in my opinion, I think the client mm -hmm. acquisition space has like um, changed quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, most of our clients, I think it came through Discord. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, I'm, I'm usually like active on Discord. And I think okay. I, uh, the first 10 K per month, um, came from discord itself. And then other, like, you know, the, the main source of our clients is probably referrals and inbounds. Okay. Um, I haven't Great. done much of, uh, outreach. I mean, I'm doing it, you know, starting this year, I like uh, mm. pretty decent things set up, but that's like topic for another day. But yeah, mm. most of it is just referrals and, and, okay. and I think if you want to get clients, mm. uh, in like today, the, your main focus should be in becoming, uh, you know, like an authority in your niche, right? Mm. If people receive, I don't know, 50, 60 email DMs a day, right? So yeah. the way that you can differentiate yourself is by making them trust you. And that's mm. by, you know, uh, be, you know, building the authority. So maybe like contents, maybe newsletters, maybe, you know, groups, maybe value stuff like that. So yeah. I think yeah. that is, um, going to be my main, my main focus from 2024. Great. I mean, um, it's so surprising, right? Like uh, we did like on our last episode, we had somebody who said that LinkedIn e emails works well for them, right? Which is something different. Like I, I haven't heard a lot of people saying that we use LinkedIn e emails, you know, full fledged just to get all of our clients. Discord again is a very different one. I think a lot of young people right now are on Discord. I think they can really leverage Discord if they fun understand, you know, more fundamentals about okay, how to go to these groups, how to join these groups how to provide value first. And obviously, as you mentioned, you know, becoming an authority in your niche is going to be crucial, right? So my next question is like, what are you doing or what are your plans in 2024 to, you know, become an authority into this space? Um, so yeah, my first thing is like, mm -hmm. you know, starting off with an Instagram brand, right? Okay. Um, maybe like we'll play around a bit with the short form videos and here and there, right? YouTube videos mm -hmm. and stuff. 
I'm also yeah. planning on starting my newsletter soon. Um, mm. And I think from that, probably we'll, uh, you know, look forward to building like a, like a lead magnet funnel. So lead magnet and a nurture funnel. So let's see how it goes. Like I don't have like a complete A to Z mapped it out, but it was like a rough idea. It was like to create a lead magnet and then nurture them. So. Great. Yeah, I think and uh, the beauty about, uh, you know, creating content or becoming an authority on niche is that for the most part, it's pretty free for people, yeah. right? It's, it's almost free to put out content. And I think uh, anybody who is just getting started into the space should, you know, provide at least 20, 30% of their time into building their personal brand as well on the side, right? Yeah. Really trying to understand what is the industry about, uh, really trying to understand the basics, fundamentals, then passing it along, you know, providing as much value as they can. And I think yeah, that'll, that'll attract really high quality clients for them. Definitely. Um, what would you say is like, you mentioned Discord and you mentioned referrals, right? So I want to ask you that, what is it that, you know, you do different that first of all, you know, got people attracted on Discord to, you know, connect with you and work with you. And what, and the second part of that question is, uh, what do you do so that, you know, clients fall in love with you? Right, because you're getting referrals, that's a very big thing, right? So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I think on Discord, um, this was like quite opposite of LinkedIn, to be honest, right? Mm -hmm. So, LinkedIn, you want to be you know, appear as professional as possible, you know, with a, yeah. like, a student tie, right? Like a bank background, yeah, I'll do this for you, blah blah blah, right? So, like, mm -hmm. just like corporate stuff, but on Discord, bro, if you do that, no one's gonna want to work with you, yeah. Right? So, what you have to understand is like. On Discord, people don't want to be professional on Discord, bro. Yeah. Uh, like, unless it's like a professional group, right? So, mm. you know, people, when they try to get clients on Discord, they have their like super, you know, suited, good profile picture and stuff, right? Mm. Uh, like a full bio. Hey, I'll help you with this, 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 paid ads, emails and stuff. Yeah. But my Discord name mm. was Sexy Goat Lover, right? Okay. And I had a picture of a goat wearing sunglasses. Mm. And that is how, you know, I made people trust me because... Like if a if a guy named Sexy Goat Lover message, you see people like, oh, this guy is gonna sell me. They don't think like that. They're yeah. Like, Who the hell is this, right? But yeah. at the same time, that makes things so much easier to connect with him because the name itself is like like a conversation starter. Yeah. And another thing that I did was, you know, they had like a bunch of Discord groups. Mm -hmm. And I posted, um, you know, I answered questions, uh, mm -hmm. you know, regarding not just emails but like ecom in general and stuff, right? Yeah. Posted results posted designs everywhere mm. I could got banned in probably one, two servers, but yeah. you know, overall that, um, helped really helped out. Like in just posting the, um, results regularly. And also what that did was that allowed me uh, it to basically get access to some private discord groups mm. with like some like really big names in e-commerce. Yeah. So, uh, private groups with just like people who have done like eight, and nine figures. Right. And, yeah. Uh, that is definitely acting like a social proof and also yeah. like the network. And the second question regarding, uh, you know, how to make clients fall in love with you is, you know, over deliver. I think mm -hmm. that's the first part, right? But yeah, in terms of just like over delivering, mm -hmm. um, it's don't only really just focus on what you do, right? Okay. Do yeah. the thing you promise to do, but in our case, I help my clients, you know, with hiring people, I, you know, help my clients, let's say, uh, give them UGC creator list, right? Yeah. I find them, you know, like other agencies, I find like, you know, bunch of stuff, any offer, any competitor I can find, you know, I help them, uh, you know, uh, like overall um, growth, not just in email and SMS. Mm. Right? And what that does is that, you know, just makes them feel like a partner, mm. right? So, yeah. and another main important part, I think, that is probably the most mm. important thing for client retention mm. is communication, right? Mm. Most agencies, right? They don't communicate with clients. Yeah. And even my clients have, uh, you know, told me in the past that even though they're working with like big agencies before, they just feel like another customer, but with us, it mm. feels like, you know, we're partners. And even on our testimonial, client testimonial videos, you know, they've mentioned that, like, it feels yeah. like a partner. And, yeah. Uh, I think that's the main part, like over delivering and communication. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, man. I think truly like, you know, even with our own agency from the people I've seen who have done really well with their agencies, 
communication and culture that is key obviously that is mixed up with uh, you know over delivering and having a good team that goes without saying but uh, communicating really well with people um, you know uh, over delivering on your promises making them truly feel that okay you know uh, they they got a bank with a buck right um, that is very important um coming to you know um coming to you know your uh, the way you work right so when you talk about communication is it you that uh, are you the person who is going out there and communicating with clients or have you sort of you know hired like a chief of operations or somebody like that who helps you with this process yeah so i have a ceo okay and with the technical stuff with the you know working stuff right mm-hmm. um he usually communicates with the clients like when it's like time to text like hey we need this he yeah. you know, this has been done this needs to be done mm-hmm. but with kind of like a you know when when i'm on a call with them the reporting mm-hmm. part and um you know just um the part that the important part in general like the important piece of communication i handle that and when i'm on yeah. a call with them like, we also go over um like i said other stuff apart from just emails and sms right so mm-hmm. uh and the reason i handle the communication myself is cuz i i love talking with people and i love mm-hmm. e-commerce in general so i i take it like as a chance uh for me to teach them as all well, uh, and also like you know way to learn from them so mm-hmm. uh, you know like building that bond so most of the communication that is technical or like work related is done by my partners and stuff you know reporting is done by me Hmm. Great man, great. So, what would you say, right? Like for the people, for brand owners, for agency mm-hmm. owners, just to give them the motivation, right? Uh, especially talking about like your brands. So, how much money you would say you have generated for the e-com brands that you have worked with in total? You would say. Okay, so um, adding the you know the revenue from like just the, from mm-hmm. last year four, I think over the course of two years we have generated over fourteen million dollars uh, from email and SMS. And um, so yeah, it was for over fifty-five brands with mm-hmm. like, done with you, done for you model and everything. Um, yeah. So yeah, we definitely crossed that eight figure, eight figure mark. So that's crazy, man! And especially doing it via email, SMS, CRO, that's absolutely massive because you can imagine the amount of profits they would have gotten to keep, right? Um, so yeah, fantastic, man! Kudos on that. So talking about you know like some more personal stuff, right? Um, you know you have you have started this whole journey almost 10 years back i would say when you started working and uh, you know like when you were 11 years old um what would you say are the changes that you know you have seen and observed in your personality in the way you go about your day in a day to day basis right um so what are the changes which you have seen over the past 10 years you know if you have self reflected uh, self criticized i think that's a very important activity to do so what would you say you have seen i think the main change is that mm-hmm. i've gotten is like confidence in myself mm-hmm. when you're doing business cuz like i was a really shy kid right i was, mm-hmm. I was like a really shy kid yeah like, even before like covid i used to wear masks just because i was shy so mm-hmm. um and i think cuz when when like when you're doing like a job it's um and you know i'm not going to tell the name but the the place that i work with pretty toxic so especially mm-hmm. like when you're young they want to like exploit you and stuff like yeah. that um so it kind of you know kept me um kept my abilities concealed and um <clears throat> had me like inside like a well um mm. but after doing business you know you learn so many things you have to connect with so many people uh, yeah. and just doing over that you have to take responsibility so that just takes your confidence to like so you know like a different level and even mm. like, if you know if the if the young kid like that was uh you know before the business happened i probably wouldn't be here you know i couldn't mm-hmm. talk like this so yeah most part confidence and another thing is the ability to you know take responsibility and accountability mm-hmm. uh, if you're a business owner right you have to be accountable for not only yourself but your business in general right yeah so sure. stuff like that and now when you have people that you know work with you and people that you work for like you know for your clients and stuff right mm-hmm. you need to be responsible to like a different level compared to like when you're doing like a job so yeah. i think those stuff are um the biggest changes that i noticed 
Yeah, that's great, man. So, like, one more question, you know, out of this, like, you mentioned accountability and all of those, just taking responsibility. So, uh, many people have this question that, okay, how do you go about that, right? Like, do you have a set routine that, okay, when I wake up, I'll do this, then in midday, I'll do this. So, how's your day structured so that, you know, you can do what you do? Uh, initially, like, I, I tried having, like, a like a plan, you know, like, a day, mm-hmm. you know, this morning routine, work routine and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's, not, that that's a bunch of bullshit. All you mm-hmm. have to do is just stay disciplined, wake up, you know, I, I also go to college, um, so mm-hmm. sometimes take like seven hours of my time, but after that, yeah. you know, when I'm free, I work, um, uh, also like join martial arts and mm-hmm. uh, take time for that. I take time for my family, the, for my friends, mm-hmm. um, and uh, just doing, you know, the things and not like uh, making like a barrier or um mm-hmm. have like a fixed time okay i'll do this by this time i'll do that by that time definitely mm-hmm. is like my working structure because like mm-hmm. i'm doing business to work on my time right so what's the point if i just you know have like a fixed schedule mm-hmm. uh, you know given the work is done given everything is smooth i just like have this um, um working schedule where i do the, the time that i want yeah yeah that's great man you mentioned college so i'm curious like what is the reaction of your friends do they know that ankit runs such a big agency do your teachers know like what is their reaction to all of this um yeah my friends um uh, yeah my friends definitely have been supportive of it mm-hmm. and uh, some of my teachers know not everyone but they've been okay. supportive as well so yeah it's like really do, do they do they know the scale at which you're doing things i don't know <laughs> <laughs> because I, I i can imagine you know how shocked they would be if you just tell them you're at the scale of uh you know the at the, at the level you're doing things right now right yeah. with the agency the kind of clients you're working with because i remember like uh, so i graduated this year as well right and uh last year when i told my so we had this like so we have one semester where, where we have to do an internship and i'd actually bagged a job like a full-time gig in dubai right and when i came back from dubai I told my, the, the teacher in charge, I told him that, you know, hey, I went to Dubai and that is where I did my internship. And like the culture here in India is that, uh, especially in colleges, they are not that updated in terms of um, the, you know, the, the the syllabus, right? Or the tools and the kind of things going on in the world. So they are working on a very old school way of, um, you know, doing internships and teaching students, right? And uh, he said that, okay, you, so he said, okay, you did an internship in Dubai, right? So in what space was it? I told him that it was into e-commerce and I was, you know, working in this whole uh, marketing space, right? And I was doing engineering at that time. And his first question was that, okay, what kind of visa did you go to Dubai on, right? Like you went to Dubai illegally, right? So we'll have to complain to the principal. I'm like, what the hell, right? (laughs) Instead of just saying that, you know, we are proud of you or, you know, kudos, how did you manage it? They were like, no, 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 we'll have to tell the principal you went on a, you know, like a vacation visa to Dubai or whatever it is. So, you know, people, uh, they, it's, it's very hard. And I think India is changing in not only India, the world is changing very quickly and very yeah. rapidly because of the internet. We are looking, uh, taking inspiration from people in the West, right. And, um, we are getting like pretty quickly, uh, attuned to this whole online business space, right. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's great, man, that your friends are supportive. What about your parents? Like, uh, have they been supportive of your journey? Like you mentioned, you started working at 11, right? Mm-hmm. So, what was their reaction like? Uh, yeah, my parents knew, you know, that I used to work. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. it was not like daily working stuff. It was like kind of project-based here and there. Uh, right. But I didn't, you know, I just told them that I had, I was doing something on the internet and stuff like that during the, during mm-hmm. the lockdown. They yeah. didn't know what, and I told them, yeah that uh you know only after i made my first thousand dollars a month and i mm. told them that and your thousand dollars a month in nepal is like a really big amount and they're like yeah are you doing anything illegal and i was like no. mm. <laughs> that's the kind of reaction you weren't selling drugs on you know on the on the internet or something like that yeah on the dark web <laughs> exactly <laughs> crazy man crazy that's that's fantastic man like i i think uh, everybody like especially youngsters um the closest you are are to your parents and their reaction is uh their reaction and the support is what you need right to just keep yeah. on going right so that is definitely there so talking about you know some some like you know there have been various phases i'm sure in your whole journey from you know being an intern or working on a project basis to now being a business owner so what would you say are the different problems the different setbacks you would have faced during this whole journey 
Um, I think the main setback that mm-hmm. like you know almost every business owner faces when they're like do it, you know running at a scale mm-hmm. is being in that comfort zone. And mm-hmm. let's be honest, you know ninety nine point nine 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 percent of business owners face this at some point, right? Yeah. So I think we you know humans are like you know really curious creatures, and mm-hmm. the reason that Wright brothers made the plane right. And, yeah. you know, people made like the car and stuff, everything. The reason that humans mm-hmm. are going to space is because that yeah. humans are curious creatures. And mm-hmm. I think we have the potential to learn everything, right? Learn mm-hmm. so much stuff. Uh, but this stuff, the thing that's, you know, he- holding us back is our own limit or our, our you know, mm-hmm. our mind. And uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> once you're like making decent money, especially like in, in the young age, you definitely mm-hmm. go to that comfort zone. So I think... Mm-hmm. I had like a bit of comfort zone with, uh, like a few months back because of mm. which I noticed that the growth wasn't, you know, um, as good as before. But yeah, um, I think it's part of the game and I've mm. kind of moved up from that space. So, yeah. So does somebody help you with this? Like, you know, snapping back into reality or, you know, you're at this stage yourself aware enough to know that, okay, I'm slacking, man. I need to get back into the game. Okay. So initial, like the thing is, in Nepal, the agency space is not that big. Right? There are like, mm. you know, barely three, four agencies making like six figures a year. And, okay. um, you know, initially, like when I, when I wasn't making, I used to look up to them. And now like we're at mm. the same level. It just mm. keeps you things, you know, like it just keeps like, okay, I'm, I'm basically at the level of top level. So, yeah. you know, but what I did was I joined, there's a server called Agency Domain by Jack Scubert, um, okay. and Wolf and Ashton Shanks. And mm. this is like, bunch of agency owners and holy shit bro like i was getting complacent like let's say six figures a month yeah or six figures a year and these guys are doing seven figures a month um, and they're still growing like and they're still yeah. so active and other bunch of agency owners you know just connecting with uh some big guys so you know just yeah and even <clears throat> one of the reasons that i joined the agency scaling system mm-hmm. was because that you know, Faisal and Nick, those guys were doing like way better than me, right? So I just yeah. have to be humbled. In order to get yeah. you know, out of the comfort zone, you have to know that you're you're not shit. So yeah. I think that uh, you know, meeting people who are doing like way better than me, uh, yeah, really me a lot. That's fantastic, man. And I think you have your own community as well. Do you want to talk about that? You know, what you guys do, uh, who <clears throat> all join, who is it for? Yeah. Okay. So, um, like I said, the agency space in Nepal is like really new. Mm-hmm. And uh, just the general online, you know, uh, marketing or money making space. So um, mm-hmm. I created Upwards Nepal. It's called Upwards Nepal. I think we have 380 people inside it. And uh, just <clears throat> mostly young entrepreneurs, um, mm-hmm. 14 to, you know, 30 uh, aged people who yeah. are doing stuff online. They have their own agency. They're into e-com. They mm-hmm. can do freelancing and stuff. So yeah. that I just want to create like um like a community inside the mm. country as well, right? Of like yeah. people meet up. Uh, we also like multiple events where people meet each other, like networking events. Uh, recently, I think uh, like a month ago, I also did like a private agency mastermind, growth mastermind okay. with like good agency owners. And we also have like a private community of people who are doing, uh, you know, six figures up here stuff. Um, yeah. But that the goal with this is to provide community to let's say uh, up and coming people that you know uh, we didn't have when you know we were starting out yeah and not only so, that, yeah. so can anybody join like so for the people who are interested anybody can join right like i put your yeah. link in the description and they can you know check check you yeah, out exactly. yeah perfect man perfect yeah and i i personally feel that you know what you mentioned about this whole competition thing i think um competing and being competitive and being ambitious, especially being around ambitious people is so uh, infectious that, you know, you're automatically prepared into working harder. And uh, for the people who are watching or the people who want to get in, you know, into this space, right? Or for the people who are already into this space, I think a very good, um, you know, a very good way to snap out of your complacency is to go out there and explore these different kind of masterminds and these networking groups and understanding that, you know, there's always uh, bigger fish to catch, right? There's always people making more money than you. There's always people doing so much more than you. And, you know, you're almost um, surprised by how much energy these guys have, right? And then you are automatically 
put into this whole work mode, right, of pushing harder and harder. So that's fantastic, man. Um, so one more question which a lot of people have is that, you know, once they're getting started, what are the different kind of tools and softwares they would need to, you know, set up their whole business, right? So what are the kind of tools and softwares are you using right now? And what would you say you're spending right now on them? Okay, so on for business purposes, we only use two softwares and both okay. of them are free. Mm-hmm. So the first is Discord. Mm-hmm. We, you know, uh, we, we don't use Slack. We use Discord mm-hmm. for our team communications and our calls because mm-hmm. uh, most of our team is like, you know, kind of like a Gen Z stuff. So they yeah. know Discord. And Discord has like so much better, you know, functionality than Slack, like adding mm-hmm. bots and VCs and, you know, like roles mm-hmm. and everything. So, mm-hmm. you know, just like really good in general. And another tool that we use is called ClickUp. Got so it. it's like a, it's a, it's something like a notion, but it's like really cheap and like really easy to use, especially like it's like tons of free templates Yeah. And for project management and task management. We use click on mm-hmm. and for Got personal it. stuff. Um, I am like a old school guy. So I always have this like notebook that I yeah. can. So it's like the best thing for me. Yeah. So what about like, uh, how do you take care of like your invoicing and payments mm-hmm. and, uh, all of that? Okay, so for invoicing, we use Zoho Invoice. So that just gives okay. us, um, you know, the ability to like send invoices as well as to track the invoices. Got it. And the payments, um, it's just like wire transfer mostly from the client okay. that hits to the, to the bank. Got it. So how much would you say you're spending on these software, like including everything? For like the, these two softwares is nothing in general. Okay. Um, but like, yeah, we do have like a bunch of softwares for like the agency maintainer. So um, mm. chat GPT. Um, that yeah. the team might need to use. And then like, let's say for cold emails, we have like different softwares. Got um, it. And it's just like those small, small sort of like Calendly. So yeah, mm. yeah. Not that got probably 150, 200 a month. Got it, got it. Crazy man, crazy. Perfect. So, you know, we are coming towards the end of the podcast, right? What is the one word of advice you would give to anybody who wants to get started mm-hmm. like freelancing or into the agency space? Um. I think the main stuff that, you know, uh, I recommend is, you know, just do it, right? Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid because what most people think is, oh, like, what if I fail? Yeah. It's not easy. I mean, shit, like if it, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? But it might not be easy, but it's definitely worth it. Right? And if you want to get, get into like the business world, starting with an agency will teach you so much more, so much more. And the thing is, you don't even need to have like money, right? Like if you, if you want to get your first client, you don't even need, you know, need to spend a single dollar on like tools and softwares and stuff. Right. And, and you know, just having the agency will teach you about, you know, HR, it'll teach you about sales, about, um, you know, building a team about, you know, like, uh, legal stuff and everything, which let's say you want to do like a bigger business in the future. It's going to help you so much more. Right. So if you're young, you know, even if you're like, 30, 40, I don't care, right? If you want to get into agency, just do it. Don't think about what other people will say. You'll only find success if you try it. Perfect, man. That's, I think that's, you've summarized everything so nicely. And um, I'm sure people will take away lo- a lot from this conversation. So yeah, Ankit, I think we are towards the end now. We have a rapid fire round and yeah. we have a bunch of questions, bunch of fun questions for you. So are you ready, man? Yeah, just give me a second. I'm just going to drink some water. <laughs> you you better man you better because it's going to be interesting you have only a couple of questions but all right so um you mentioned that you know uh, most of the people you know you are in touch with and most of the brand owners um are gen z right so what is one youtube channel or one instagram channel or one influencer rather who you would recommend everybody follow and take their advice david Fogutry from udi probably the best guy if you want to get in, into like the e-com space in general and yeah. there's another guy it, like for agency owners his name is joshua johnson big shout out to him like you know like his mm. content bro like just his free youtube content is like worth like so much money you know it's like really good yeah. and one another person is sam Evans, like yeah. the absolute you know one of the godfathers of the you know online money making space so yeah those three guys yeah uh, Sam Owens is the person, uh, he's also the founder of School, if I'm not wrong, right? I don't think he's the founder. He bought School, I think, but okay. he's the founder of Consulting Accelerator. Yeah. 
Got it, got it. Perfect, man, perfect. So what is one book you recommend everybody read? Fiction or non-fiction? Oh, shit. Like, uh, Sell Like Crazy by Sabi Subi. Oh, crazy. Our last guest also literally said the same book. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what is one which is your favorite movie and which is one movie you would recommend everybody watch shit I don't even watch that many movies uh, I, I, like is it cool if I say the anime uh, an, an anime sure sure man sure. It, it's called One Piece and it's okay. a guy about you know pirates and stuff but it teaches you so much about mm. the world and like mm-hmm. discrimination that's happening so it's like really cool perfect man perfect and um, so if you had a chance of you know acquiring any superpower anything at all what would that one superpower look like? Um, I think the ability to manipulate gravity because, you know, if you can manipulate gravity or gravitation, like yeah. you can like, manipulate time and that shit's like yeah. super only hard. Great, man. The last guest we had, he said manipulation in general, like people's yeah. minds. He, he was more towards like hypnotism. Uh, like yeah that's crazy man hypnotism is a big thing at all uh, definitely and uh just for the people right just to get motivated which is the biggest client retainer you've ever closed client retainer like monthly or like you know like a year or so monthly yearly whatever yeah so one of our clients has paid us over fifty thousand dollars in the year so i think that's crazy. The that's fantastic man and uh, what would you say is the best piece of life advice somebody around you or somebody on the internet has given you shit like there's so many advices but i think that the one of the biggest advices is don't listen to people you know, don't take their advice if you don't you know want to be like them at some point in the future so i think that's one of the biggest things that you know helps you to filter out the information absolutely man i think uh, that was the perfect final answer so everybody who's watching this um, you know, they can get motivated by you. You have done very well for yourself. And I'm sure, you know, you're going to go at a 10x higher speed to, you know, achieve more things. And uh, I'll be putting in all your links down below. So people who want to follow you can go ahead and, you know, connect with you. And thank you so much, Ankit, for joining me. And thank it's you. been a pleasure. And I'm, I look forward to doing this again very soon. Likewise, bro. Thank you for having me. And uh, 